hitting success club early in the month. Um, but first let me share my screen. And take this out of the way. Okay. So first, some recognition. I just thought this was like so awesome. I feel like every week, every month, these are getting more and more full. I don't know how we're going to cram any more tiny little faces on one of those um, recognition things. Um, but everybody's doing amazing, helping so many people. Um, and I don't think it's any coincidence that it's pretty much aligning with um, the 80 day obsession as we get further and further into the program. So congratulations to everybody on there. Oh, and um, before I keep going, I, there was a ton of people that advanced and different things like that. So I was just going to run down through them really quick. Um, I saw a new business starter was Janessa. I saw Sierra was our new Emerald. There was a lot of new team builders, Jessica, Samantha, Jen, Rebecca, Sarah, Alicia, and Whitney. And our top recruiters were Meg, Katie, Jen, and Cassie. And then um, I think it's kind of actually appropriate that I was doing the call this week because I actually just made SD5 legend and team leader last month. So, no. Ah. So, did I just say the mango? Just make sure that you guys are muted. Can you mute yourself? Awesome. Okay. So, um, getting into Success Club early, um, Meg shared some awesome tips in Project Fearless last week, and I feel like this call. Just make sure that you're muted so that people aren't hearing the random noises of your house. Just keep going, Mariah. Okay. Um, so basically, I feel like this is going to be a recap of, of Meg's amazing tips from last week. But um, And I kind of feel the same way she did it. Like, I don't pull in the big numbers. Like, some months I really feel like I struggle to get six. Um, but I, but I push through and I, and I do it. And that's why I've been in success club for 24 months straight now. Um, it's just a non-negotiable for me. I have big goals for my business and I know that in order to get there, that's what I have to do. I have to make six. Up. So, um, but these last couple months and again, aligning with 80 day obsession for me, something has changed and, um, the numbers are getting bigger and it's feeling easier. It's not feeling so much like work. It's feeling like people are just coming to me. Um, and so anyways, I want to share what I've been doing so that hopefully you guys can get some tips too. So we're going to go through the what, the why, and the how. So the what, you should be shooting for SC5 minimum every month. And I don't even know if we can get one point anymore. So six um, to create a successful business. So um, I think they say if you hit SC five every single month within three to six years, you're going to three to five years, you're going to hit six figure income. Um, and I, it's true for me, I've seen my, what I made last year has doubled. I can see it. it's going to be even more than doubled this year. So, um, so set specific goals, know what you're shooting for. We want to be helping at least three people every month, um, but know what you're shooting for and what your goals are. So if you're shooting for SC5, SC10, SC20, have that, you know, somewhere where you can see it all the time and then reverse engineer it to figure out how many people that means that you need to reach out to every single day. So if you're reaching out to five people a day, every day of, of the month, and you've been have, helping an average of like three people every month, um, but your goal is to help five people every month, then you have to step it up a little bit and, you know, maybe you're reaching out to eight to 10 people a day instead. So just kind of breaking it down from that original goal of, you know, helping 20 people a month, you have to figure out how many people, you know, every day that you need to reach out to and invite. Um, da -da -da. The why, um, especially why you want to hit it early in the month. I feel like, Sometimes towards the end of the month, we feel a little bit of pressure. We feel a little bit of stress. 
it becomes more about the number and not about helping the people. So for me to hit it early, it leaves more room for joy. And when I'm more joyful and excited, that, you know, shows in my posts, in my interactions with people. And I feel like it just attracts more of that goodness into my life. Um, it also gives you, if you're building a team, it's going to help give you more time and energy to help your sponsored coaches to do the same thing. So, you know, knowing that I'm in it halfway through the month doesn't mean that I stop working. I'm going to continue working and continue plugging along and doing my vitals, but I feel like I have more time then to, you know, share what I've been doing with my coaches and kind of just continue to create that duplication, um, rather than being so focused on, on my own business, because ultimately, yes, that's, that's the first thing I do. You know, that's the first thing I schedule into my day is, is my business stuff. I do my workout, I drink my shake, I read my PD and then I do my business stuff. And then I go in and try to help my coaches with whatever they need help with. Um, it creates so much momentum for the months to come. And I have found that month and month and month again, especially in the months that I'm struggling to get to success club, I am like pushing so hard at the end of the month that usually my following month I hit, success club really early because I've, I've chatted with, you know, 30, 40, 50 people a day instead of the five people that I normally do. Um, so the following month usually seems pretty easy and people are, you know, ready to sign at the beginning of the month because we've been having those conversations. Um, it just sets the pace for, for your business the entire month. You're going to keep pushing hard. You're going to, you know, once you're already in, you're like, okay, I'm good. And, and you can just keep going with it. Um, and then there's all these kinds of cool things you if you hit it for three, your first three months as a coach, you get a free summit ticket, which is amazing. I ended up getting that and it was like, you know, traveling it can be expensive and it was my first trip and I wasn't making a ton of money. So to have that be free, that was honestly the reason why I went. I was like, well, I have this free ticket. Like, you know, it, it's a really cool perk. Um, there's a lot of different parties at the, at the events. Um, photo ops with different trainers. And then they send you these amazing gifts every month when you hit success club, um, which is incredible to me because I never felt like in my other job, I, I was recognized or thanked for doing anything. And the fact that I'm like just helping people and being a cheerleader for them. And then I get sent books and aprons and shakeology canisters and all this cool stuff is, it just makes me feel good. It makes me feel happy to be part of this. So the how, these are the things I do and I'm going to break them down a little bit more, but essentially it's the vital behaviors. So being proof the product works, inviting, recognition, PD, um, creating interaction. That's the top of your funnel. And I'll talk about that more in a little bit. Um, inviting again is huge. Call to action posts, sharing consistently, following up times a million. And then again, more um, mindset like Kelsey had talked about last week and or two weeks ago and using your resources so so the interaction I think is a really big one it's filling the top of that giant funnel that you have that's gonna work people down to getting them to be your challengers and then eventually your coaches um, but you have all these people you have all these friends on Facebook and on Instagram that are following you and watching you um, and, and how do you get them into your challenge groups and to, you know, get signed up and get started on their health and fitness journey. So you have to create some kind of engagement with them. Um, I just put this on my Instagram today, these crazy jackfruits at the grocery store. Like I had never seen them before. So I just put up a poll on Instagram. You can also do a poll on Facebook. Um, just asking a question, um, I actually got a ton of comments on this and that's going to open the door for me to then have private conversations with these people and be like, you know, how do you prepare a jackfruit or like just something friendly like that. Um, something related to whatever post you made that's creating that interaction. And then that's going to further open the door for you guys to chat, you know, maybe a little bit later on about what they have for health and fitness goals and getting them into a challenge group. Um, so the polls are awesome. Uh, sharing recipes. I just shared a uh, fixate. I made the fixate brownies, the chickpea brownies, and I just shared a picture. And instead of posting the picture and posting the entire recipe for everybody in the world to see, um, 
I shared a little bit about it and how much the boys really liked it and how they were healthy. And then I asked at the end, you know, does anybody want the recipes? Any sneaky moms want the recipes? Because I had said that they were healthy. Um, I got so many comments on that. And that's the kind of post that because they're healthy, it's already health related. Like I felt like I could share the recipe with them and then immediately invite them to a challenge group. Um, you don't have to do it that way, but that's, again, that's just a way to, to connect with people. Opin asking people's opinions. Everybody likes to talk about, you know, to give their opinion on, on stuff. So I know a lot of people, like if you're going on vacation, they'll post a couple pictures of different bathing suits. Or if you're going to something fancy, you post a picture of a couple different dresses and say, which one? Um, that, again, is just getting people to... In the, to the top of that funnel, and it's creating relationships with people, whether they know it or not, um, for you guys to connect again later about something a little bit more substantial. So uh, I think that's it. Oh, or, or free groups too. I think we've kind of gone away from them a little bit, but um, I know in the past we've done, you know, five-day clean eating groups, and those are completely free. we we'll do, you know, crock pot groups or, you know, healthy lunches for kids or anything, anything you want, but you know, those short free where you just give them a ton of value, let them know that you care about them. You care that they're healthy. Um, and that you want nothing in return. That is an amazing relationship and trust builder. So those free groups are really, really helpful as well. Um, so these are just a couple examples of how I've been inviting. Um, so the 80 day group, um, it's probably my biggest one, and I usually say something like this. Hey, Jen, I hope your year's off to an amazing start so far. I don't know if you're working on any health and fitness goals before summer or vacays, or if you've seen my post lately about the group I'm running or the new group I'm doing or the new program I'm doing, but it's amazing, and I wanted to invite you. The ladies in our group right now are loving it and seeing so many crazy changes. We're starting up another round of ladies May 7th. Any interest in joining us for 80-day obsession? I've gotten a ton, a ton of interest. Um, these are people that I've talked to before. These are people that I've never talked to before. This is what my donut has been looking like as, like as well. Um, and then there's kind of just a more general one. Hey girl, I know it's kind of random, but I just started another online fitness accountability group with a great group of ladies working on some goals for summer. We share recipes, workouts, nutrition tips, encourage each other and do surprise giveaways. Any interest in joining us? Really simple, really to the point. Um, and then for somebody that you've talked to before, um, I just bring it back to that. Hey, I know we chatted a while back and you wanted to work on, and then I restate whatever their goals are. I just kind of, I don't mean it to sound like this, but I kind of throw it back in their face um, because, you know, I'll, they said that they're really serious about working on it and something came up, some objection probably came up and, or they got scared or they were doubting themselves. Um, so I just remind them like, hey, you I know you really wanted to lose those 10 pounds and tone up before summer came. Um, I have another accountability group starting up on and make sure that you have a date for it. Uh, and I'd love to have you join us if you're interested. What do you think? And I always leave the ball in their court. So there's a question at the end of all of mine um, so that they have something to respond to. So there's that. So the call to action. Um, Again, always having something to invite to. Um, I have been doing, since I started 80 Day, that's something that I've changed. And I used to think like people were getting bored of seeing me or they were like, oh my God, she's inviting me to something again. Um, but since I've been doing 80 Day, I'm like so stoked about it and I want everybody to do it with us. I have probably been putting up four to five call to actions a week. Um, and those are mostly... Um, to the challenge group. I might do like, I, I need to do more. I might do one coaching one or whatever, but, um, and that's per platform. So I will do like four on Facebook and then I'll go to Instagram and I usually do like a poll on Instagram on the stories. Um, and then I sometimes do it in just in my general posts as well. Um, so again, always having something to invite to free the short, short, because you're pouring out a lot of yourself into those free groups by adding all that value and not, you know, not getting anything in return, which is fine. Um, but you can't, you know, overexert yourself and then have nothing left to give. So, um, short groups, three to five days, fill the top of your funnel, ADD obsession group, 
We have the, we are obsessed group. There's a lot of us coaches in there. We're all trying to add value and giving tips and answering questions and sharing our meal plans and stuff like that. Anybody can add people to that. Okay. So that's really awesome. Like you get to do less work because there's so many of us in there. It doesn't mean you don't get to do any, you have to still have to contribute, but, um, but it spreads the workload out a lot and they get to see all these other results and stuff. It's an amazing tool, especially if you have somebody that you've tried and tried and tried and just will not do Shakeology or the performance line for them to see these other people posting about the results that they're, that they're getting with the Shakeology and the performance line is really, really, um, motivating for them to, to go that way. Um, and then you have your own challenge group where they can do whatever program they want. Um, so you're sharing your story should not sound like an infomercial. Um, read it out loud, not only to yourself, but I would encourage you to either read it out loud to your spouse or your coach or a friend and just be like, does this sound like I'm trying to sell something to you? Because that is the last thing that we want to do. We have so many sales posts in our feeds every single day. And I am quite honestly, like I just scroll right on by. So, um, especially if there's pictures of products and stuff like that. I just ran on by. If there's like a nice clear picture of somebody smiling or happy or doing something fun, um, I'm going to stop and, and at least start to read that post. Again, if it sounds like they're trying to, you know, tell me about this awesome new product that just came out, I'm probably going to keep scrolling. So this really has to be like completely you, your story, who you were before you started Beachbody, um, why you started, how you were feeling, what changed for you? What was that aha moment that was like, you know, okay, I need to do something now. Um, and then how you're feeling now. So if you need some ideas, I suggest you go check out some of the, the leaders on our team, go check out, you know, their posts, you know, Joan and Katie and Meg and Kelsey and everybody does an awesome job posting their story and really sharing like from their heart and their experiences. Um, so it doesn't, doesn't sound salesy at all. You're just, trying to relate to people who feel the same way. Um, and then sharing others' progress and victories. That's something that I didn't do enough of before. And since 80 day and everybody's sharing the results all over the place, um, I've really, really started to do that. And it's been very powerful. I've had several people um, tell me once they've signed up, they're like, you know, I know I, I've seen your results and like, they're awesome, but that's not what my body looks like. You know, they might have, 150, 200 pounds to lose. And, and that's just not me. Um, but I'll share some of the, the pictures that I've got, to, you know, from, from other people that are doing the program that maybe do look more like them. And they're like, Oh my gosh, if she can do it, I can do it. And that is the whole thing. I'm sharing other people's results. Um, so I try to do that once, at least once or twice a week. Um, and share a little bit about that person, you know, like, like, if you want to share my results, please do. Um, I've had two C-sections. I didn't think I would ever have abs again. I have abs, you know, like some people have four kids and they work full time and they're going to school and they're still fitting, fitting in these workouts. And, um, some people have chronic illnesses and they're still getting stronger and they're working, you know, it's, there's so many different stories and it's really helpful for people to see all of those different, uh, different things. So sharing your just your journey consistently, Kelsey has done awesome at this. So I definitely wanted to highlight her um, her progress here. So you don't have to be doing eighty day obsession to hit Success Club to share your journey. Um, no matter what program you're doing, that's that's the difference for us with this program is that you know we've been encouraged to share every single week. And now moving forward, no matter what program I do. I'm going to be doing this exact same thing every single week. I'm going to be taking these side by side pictures so that people can see my progress. So act like you're in the actual test group with the trainer, follow the meal plan to a T, follow the workouts to a T. We all mess up. If you mess up, you know, one meal, it's not the end of the world. Just move forward and share that, share that real life with people. Um, but just share consistently weekly progress, but also the day to day struggles. Like I just said, um, and then continue to sometimes it's, it can be, we get comfortable sharing our family and then that's all we share. And then it becomes a little less relatable to people when all they see is us posting our workouts. Um, so just don't forget to share the rest of your life. I know 
now that, especially now that I'm not working as much, sometimes I feel like, you know, my life is boring. I just do the same thing over and over. I really don't do much else besides work out and work on my business. Um, but there's so many things, like I was telling somebody the other day, I'm like, do you ever get stuck in traffic? Like share that. That's something that other people are like, oh my gosh, yeah, I hate it when that happens. It's something that they connect with and they, you know, realize that they're a little bit more like you. Um, I share what I get at the grocery store. I share my dog. I share my kids. There's something that you can share that's just like somebody else um, that they're going to connect connect with. So uh, that's it with that. And then a zillion follow-ups. Um, Meg mentioned that, and I think it's just cannot be emphasized enough that people are going to think that you're selling them something if you don't at them. Or, or invite them and then you never talk to them again, or it's six months. And uh, I'm guilty of doing that. I've you know, lost track of people and then it has been six months and then I prof apologize profusely and um, you know, say, oh my goodness, I'm so sorry. And I, I usually do not invite them in, the ne in that next post. I just, how are you doing? What have you been up to? And then we kind of have to build a relationship over again. But, but follow up, follow up, follow up. Um, have some kind of a tracking system Sometimes they fail us um, or we fail ourselves there, but pen and paper, Excel, Google Street, Teamsy. Z. I use a combination. I have Teamsy, Z, um, but mostly I like that it gives me the list of names of people to reach out to and I just track like how many people I've reached out to. Um, I use Excel and I do different um, mm -hmm. sheets for, I have a hot list. So it's people that are interested that want to be in my group that are interested in 80 day that I've put in the Snoop group. Then I have a sheet with people that have signed up as customers. I have a sheet that, of people that have signed up as coaches. Um, so you can really take it as far as you want, but just track it somehow. On my hot list, I have dates. So if somebody tells me they're going to do it on their payday, I ask them when that is. Um, being direct, that's something that Meg had mentioned as well. I've started saying, okay, great, when's payday? And, and then I know when to follow up with you and I can be available in case you have questions when you're filling it out. And then I don't feel like I have to bug them every single day. I can just contact them on payday and say, hey, you ready? Um, one follow-up's not enough. We've heard it a zillion times, but it literally takes seven to 12 connections before most people say yes. They might say no in between. They might say not right now. They might not even answer you. And I can tell you, I have a lot of messages that are blue, 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 and they haven't said anything to me, and I continue to reach out to them. Um, someday they're gonna come to me, and uh, but the seeds have been planted. I can tell you, I looked at the people that have, I've signed up so far this month um, at SC8, and I looked today, and two of them I've made connections with starting back in 2016. Um, I started general conversations with those people. One of them had signed up with me as a coach and then canceled and she just signed up again. So like never give up on people because you never know when they're going to come back to you. So don't not reach out to somebody because they were already signed up with you and, and then they quit. Um, maybe it just wasn't the right time for them. Maybe they're ready now. Maybe they need this 80 day program, you know, in their life to, to push them forward like it's done with with a lot of us um and then the other two uh are from last year and again those were just general conversations but i'll tell you that i've had from sharing my journey consistently um with 80 day i know already this month i think i've had four or five people reach out to me that i've never talked to before one girl i just friended um i don't know Oh, two weeks ago, maybe. Oh and she's God. already seen, I post consistently enough that she's seen what I'm doing and she wants in on it. So she messaged me and she's in the Snoop group and she's checking that out. So um, don't underestimate that. All right. And then mindset. I know Kelsey talked a ton about this and so I'm not going to really harp on it, but um, there's been months that I've really, really struggled with mindset and it is really, really hard to get yourself to go out of your comfort zone and message people and invite people and act excited when you are in a funk. Um, so whatever it's going to take to get you out of that funk, you need to do it. I have, like I said, I have a really hard time messaging people when I don't feel like it. And I feel like that comes across in my messages. Um, 
I know Katie said in the past, like she'll crank some music, you know, before, like before she does her workout, she'll have to do that before she messages people to take some energize, um, whatever it takes to get yourself to do those vital behaviors. A lot of times I have to talk to Matt or I'll message Katie and just be like, I'm in, I'm in a funk. Like, I don't know. And usually I, it's because I haven't been keeping up with my PD or, um, you know, I just, I need to do that mindset shift and get excited and, you know, look at my physical results again, or look at where my business is at and see how far I've come there. Um, look at my positive affirmations. This is one thing that I took away from um, my meeting with Jeff Matthewson um, the, a couple of months ago, whenever that was. Um, he said, create a success bank. And anybody can do this, whether you're a brand new coach, whether you're just a challenger, whatever. But um, all your little successes, all your little victories, collect those somewhere. Put a, you know, put a voice message to yourself on your phone when you have a really good day. Um, you know, for me, he was saying, like, when I don't have to miss those outings with my family on the weekends because of this business, because of where it's taken me, um, you know, put do a message to yourself and tell you, tell yourself how that feels in that moment so that when you have a bad day, you can go back to those things. So I've been saving everything. I get a lot of messages from people like, Hey, I lost four pounds today, or maybe they'll just post it in the group or, um, you know, I can't believe how amazing I feel. Like, thank you so much for getting me to do this. Thank you so much for believing in me, stuff like that. And I pull it all in this little spot and then that's what I can go to on the day today and feel like it. Um, so yeah, we don't, we don't have to have to do this at all. You don't, you don't have to, it's really, really easy not to do. Um, and then it's really easy to do as well. So what if, and I always think, what if that one person that I didn't reach out to today because I was too scared or too, too much in my own funk, too much in my own head. <laughs> um, and then PD. So what I'm listening to right now, and it was funny because I had just started listening to it. I actually bought it on Audible's. And then uh, we got it for a success club prize, I think it was, but the High Performance Habits by Brendan Bouchard. Um, I feel like that has driven me a lot. It's kind of got some tough love. It's got a lot of reality. It calls us out on the excuses that we make for ourselves. Um, and then I know Move Your Bus is also a really good one for just being consistent. I think Kelsey mentioned The Power of Consistency, I think was the name of that one. Um, but literally I just went on and Googled personal development books for being consistent and so many good ones popped up. So check those out. Um, I feel like those were immensely helpful for me and then use your resources. So we've got the snoop group, we've got conversation and objection templates in the coach online office and in project fearless in the file section, um, tips from your team. Like literally basically what I said tonight was exactly what Meg said last week like we try to come on and share whenever we can think of something you know that we've been doing that's been working well for us um grab your coach ask your coach you know what do you think i need to do more of go do have them do a facebook audit like do you think that i'm sharing enough do, what do you think i need to be sharing more of um and then google youtube all that stuff i just i youtube stuff all the time top coaches top beach body coaches trainings from top beach body coaches um and then all of the stuff in your online office and all the promos and stuff like that, like just make sure that you're staying on top of that stuff too. Um, so there's $20 off on the combo and mega packs this month. So I've been going back and talking to people that had the money objection and just letting them know that there's a deal this month. People love to save money. So um, that is what I've been doing there. And that's pretty much it. Stop sharing my screen and see the chat. Oh, let's see. If you guys have questions, you can either unmute yourselves or put them in the chat. <laughs> yes, Michaela. Uh, being at SC4 at 11.50 on the last day of the month isn't good for your heart. I have been there. It's just nerve-wracking and I don't like to do it um, response rate to donuts um I would say I don't know maybe like 25% on the first 
on the initial donut. Um, but then the follow-up is super duper important. And I usually get, you know, another 25 to 50% on those, whether it be a no or not right now, or a yes. Um, how many of them are yeses? It, it varies so much this month. Um, like I sent out probably four last night and I got two yes responses this morning. And actually one of them said her coworker was interested too. So I'm, they're both signing up. So that worked out really well for me. So I don't not do donuts because I'm scared that they might say no. Um, dog posts are golden for sure. Puppy posts. Uh, da, 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 da. I don't have like a, a specific day planner. I literally have this notebook that my husband got for me one time because he's great and he's also on this call. And I write like, I, you probably can't see this, but I literally just like say, I'm a nurse, so I do military time, <laughs> 0600 uh, breakfast you know, kids lunches, clothes. And then, so I just, I schedule my day out hour by hour. If anybody was at super Saturday, they know that's how I roll. Cause I've got kids and another job and, um, busy stuff. So yeah, I just, I schedule out my invites, um, do your power hours, do your power half hours, do your power pockets. Um, you know, if you've got 10 minutes, you're just make sure you know what you're doing because then you're going to be able to be productive. So if you know, you have 10 minutes in between, you know, an appointment and going to get your kids from school, then just know ahead of time, like I'm going to do my invites in that time and then do as many invites as you possibly can. That's, that's how I, I didn't do a great job of it at first, um, planning my time and, and that work life balance got a little crazy and it caused some tension between my husband and I, and, um, you know, the kids, there'd be time where the kids would be like, mommy, we said no phones at dinner. And that's when you get those reality checks and those wake up calls. And you're like, you're right. Like I need to make sure that the time that I use on my business is very productive and focused and I'm not scrolling and I'm not checking notifications and, and I'm still, this is a work in progress for me. I am not perfect at it by any means, but, um, but keeping the phone away from the dinner table, you know, trying to have that quality, quality time with your, with your kiddos and then setting specific business hours. A couple of my coaches have come to me this month and said, you know, I'm feeling really overwhelmed. Like I feel like I'm always on my phone and I totally felt like that at first too. Um, some days I still do, but not nearly as often anymore because I try to say, okay, from, you know, my kids are in school, so I get my workout done first. And then from, you know, nine, nine thirty or 10 till two, that's all business time. And then when they come home, it's usually supper and play time and bedtime. And then I usually have business hours again at night. So I just really had to separate it out and schedule time with your spouse. This is not what this call is about, but please do that they're helpful and supportive and stuff. hey mariah somebody um stephanie Harmon, i think meant to message the group but she messaged me privately she said and since you're running the call I'll let you answer this you kind of already went over it in the call but i'll let you reiterate it um okay. how did you get out of your comfort zone it seems like everyone is trying to sell something these days and i don't want to seem like one of those yes so um yeah that's a big thing we we're not selling, we're not selling products. We're, we're essentially selling ourselves. We're selling our own story. We're selling, um, the fact that we're, we're relatable people that are just like you that are tired, that have yo-yo dieted forever that, you know, have tried to lose weight many different ways and a lot of unhealthy ways. Um, and we found something that works and we want to share it with you. Um, so I would definitely recommend going to some of the leaders on the team's pages and checking out their call to action posts, Joan, Kelsey, Meg, Katie, myself, Brian, um, and, uh, Shannon. Oh, Shannon does such a good job. Um, there's so many people, just anybody on this call, just go to their page. Um, but yeah, just, just telling your story. Don't, don't say shakeology in your post. Don't say, you know, P90X or 80 day obsession. Just 
that curiosity marketing and sharing your story. Tell them, you know, how exhausted you were when you came home from work, how, you know, my, my personal story is that I was depressed and I was exhausted and I had two little kids at home and I couldn't pull myself off the couch enough to care to clean the house or to make dinner for my husband when he came home from work. And I felt like a failure at everything, every aspect of my life. And so I share that and I tell people that honestly, because somebody else feels like that too. And when they hear that, they know that there's hope for them and that they can, you know, they can come out of it and be stronger as well. Um, and that I can help them do that. So I hope that answered that question. So what do you think? We good? That was an awesome call, Mariah. Good. All yeah, right. I think just to reiterate, like, in the back of your mind, if you always keep that slogan, facts tell, stories sell, the more you talk about your struggles, like I can post my six pack abs all day long. Nobody cares about that. They care about where I was before Beachbody when I was 30 pounds overweight and I was eating crap and depressed and frustrated and struggling and not getting to the gym because I was making a bunch of excuses. So I have to tell that story about where my mindset was at and where I was at before that. So I think Mariah did a fantastic job letting everybody know, kind of setting a blueprint of how to be successful and how to get to success club early in the month. And I have three people lined up right now that will be purchasing challenge packs in the next week. So I will be at success club by the middle of next week. And I know there's a lot of people already there and a lot of people are killing it with their business. Um, 80 day obsession, I think has been a godsend to a lot of people's businesses. And I think it's given people the, um, kind of confidence to share about their story and share about their struggles. So just keep that going guys. Um, anything you want to add Mariah? Nope. Okay. No, I think we're good. Awesome. I think we got to all the questions. I think everybody did a great job. Thanks for showing up guys. And we'll post this in the team page in a little bit as soon as it records. All right. See ya. Night.